important conservative thinkers, Vin Weber, a leading political strategist and former member of Congress, Ramesh Panuru, uh, a writer for the National Review, and Bloomberg View. They agree with each other 97% of the time. We have fortunately found of the 3% of the issues upon which they disagree, namely the immigration reform bill passed by the Senate. Ramesh, you heard Bob Corker. He said basically it's a good bill. It's going to uh, actually help the Treasury, and it's going to secure the border. Yes, and I think that all of those uh, claims are dubious. Um, you know, the Congressional Budget Office did their budget estimate, and basically what they found is if you exclude the two largest federal programs, you've got a positive impact on the Treasury. But that's not the real world. They did an artificial window where they exclude when these immigrants retire, and they're likely to be net drains on the Treasury because it is a heavily low-skilled population, and these are redistributive programs. You've got a redistributive federal government. Government. But in that sense, aren't all new workers uh, a, a net drain of the Treasury? Isn't that really a Social Security or if Medicare you, problem? If you want to make the argument that Senator Corker is making, that we need to bring in these people in order to improve our fiscal situation, that's an argument for moving towards a more high-skilled immigration mm -hmm. flow. Mm -hmm. um, because, yes, uh, immigrants can help, but it depends on which you're taking. And the CBO says this is going to be more low-skilled than high-skilled individuals. And Ramesh, you're not convinced that that $46 billion uh, is really going to buy much more border security? You know, the amendment that Senator Corker put on was all about border security, but 40 percent of our illegal immigrant population are people who come here legally and then overstay their visas. And no amount of activity on the border is going to prevent that. All right, Ben Weber, uh, you're an advisor to the National Review and a longtime Bloomberg <laughs> contributor. Tell us why your colleague is wrong. Well, first of all, it's not wrong about everything. I, I, th this bill is not perfect. Not every claim made for it is perfect. But the CBO study does talk about enhancements to economic growth. They talk about, and I think that's beyond dispute, that immigration will contribute to economic growth. What you're saying is the contributions to growth don't produce a revenue flow back that exceeds the, uh, the the expenditures we're going to make on these people when they retire, which is exactly Al's point. You, 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 we, we have, that's an entitlement state problem on which you and I probably agree. We have too many benefits we promise to workers, whether they're immigrants, low-skilled, high-skilled, or anybody else over the long term. So we ought to fix the, the entitlement culture. I agree with that. But at the end of the day, we look around the world at Japan and places like that, and we find out what happens to economies that stagnate for lack of population growth. There was news just out today that the United States population growth is declining again. We're not quite as bad as Europe, not quite as bad as Japan, but we need additional workers. I agree with Ramesh, we need more high-skilled workers, but we also need some low-skilled workers. The entire American economy is not going to be push-button high technology. We've got agriculture, we've got an increase in manufacturing, hopefully we still need some low-skilled uh, low workers too, and increasingly a lot of uh, native-born Americans don't want to do those jobs. So on balance, this is a good bill for the economy. The, and the problem of excessive expenditures through our entitlement programs is a problem we can agree we ought to deal with regardless of what we do in immigration. Jump in on this one, Ramesh. Sure. The Congressional Budget Office is suggesting that under this bill, our immigration, legal plus illegal, over the next 10 years would be about double what it's been over the last 10 years. And it seems to me that that is a solution to a problem that doesn't actually exist. We have had extremely loose labor markets for several years. We have high unemployment. We have particularly high unemployment among people who are low skilled and in these circumstances to say we need more workers we need slacker labor markets I think it's it's a hard case to make and I'd also point out that even though there's a bipartisan consensus that Senator Corker reflected for more immigration every poll I've seen when you ask people do you want more or less immigration the less side wins and I don't see why the public preference on that shouldn't be accommodated the border uh, security became a huge issue in the Senate mm -hmm. is that driven by politics is that driven by reality it, it strikes me that the that, that 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 illegal immigration people coming across the border illegally are more a, a function of the mexican and the u.s yeah. economy than of whether we have what twenty thousand additional troops yeah. on the border well of, of course the, the facts are that we've seen a decline in immigration from mexico over the last several years on basically a stable rate for about the last three years and it, you're right it's largely due to the, the Back basically the deteriorating economy in this country over the last several years, and fortunately some improvement in the Mexican economy. Long term, 
term, if the Mexicans have a strong economy, a lot of this problem goes away or goes away substantially. I think that there's a legitimate argument to be made for doing more to secure the borders. I think in my view, we're going to extremes in this bill. I, I guess I'm diametrically opposed to some of the, I don't know exactly where you are on this, but to some of the critics of the bill who say it just doesn't do enough in terms of border security. I think we're doing an awful lot in terms of border security. Uh, for, first of all, we're going to have a 700-mile fence along our border, which is basically every inch of the border that can reasonably be fenced. We're going to deploy drones. We're going to deploy sensors of different types. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a big investment in securing the border. I think that it goes actually further than we need to go since it's almost, in my judgment, impossible to totally secure an almost 2,000-mile border through deserts and mountains and things like that. But some reasonable increase in security along our border and, and certainly monitoring of it makes some sense to me. Ramesh, we're going to have almost as many people on that border as we do on the DMZ. I mean, the Mexicans really aren't the threat the North Koreans are, are they? You know, and, and I, I guess just get back to this point that everybody talks about border security, but it, about half the problem isn't at the border. And right. this bill creates these new temporary worker programs, and it doesn't really have strong enforcement for people who stay over past their term. And that's one of the reasons why the Congressional Budget Office was saying, at most, this bill reduces illegal immigration by 50 percent. At most, and part of the reason is they're saying people are going to overstay that temporary work program. Ramesh, you have written that some of the opposition to this bill is cultural, and that's okay. Yeah, that's right. Um, I think there's a tendency in the political conversation to think, oh, culture, well, that gets you too close to race. And of course, there is a sort of racial undercurrent sometimes that ought to be resisted in these debates. But I think that assimilation is important, and it's fundamentally a cultural process where newcomers come and become part of our culture even as they change it. So there's a shared sense of belonging, and natives and newcomers alike see themselves and see one another as part of the same community. And I think that's an easier process when you've got a smaller flow of immigration. It's not an accident, I think, that a lot of the assimilation of the last big wave of immigration from 100 years ago happened from 1925 to 1965 when you had neg negligible immigration levels. You need either a pause or at least a reduction in order to promote, shall we say, the cultural digestion of the new Go slow. In yeah. Other words. Ben? Well, we, ag 